Looks like Eric found the opening for the edited show. He lied. Yup, Ams is a liar. That's amazing. Special BB Can 6 postseason interview show with Ryan. We are going to get to all of your guys' questions, I hope, if you can hear us as we go along. But first, let me let you guys know that if you want to see any of our shows back, you can check them out over at yourrealityrecaps.com slash BB Can. Check out our phone interviews, our interviews with the past house guests. Everything is over there for this season and previous seasons. Of course, if you want to watch us do these shows live, you can check them out over at yourrealityrecaps.com slash you now. You can leave your questions in the chat room. If you want to help support our shows, uh, check out the patron group at yourrealityrecaps.com slash patron. You get access to the patron-only Facebook group, prize giveaways, after shows, and more. Of course, you can always do a one-time donation at yourrealityrecaps.com slash PayPal, and just letting you know that the number one fan is winning Ryan's autograph. Now, without further ado, let's bring on the guy that you all want to hear from. It's Ryan. Hey, how's it going? It's going <laughs> great, Ryan. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. It's uh, good to be back out in the world um, and kind of know what's going on. Uh, do you know what's going on? Really? Uh, well, I mean, to a degree. Um, I haven't been able to put my phone down for long enough to read a newspaper, um, but uh, I, I'm kind of starting to pay attention to what happened in the outside world. And my wife was actually really good about that. She kept a, uh, a current events diary for me for each day that I was away. So I, when I got back, I was able to read through what was happening in their lives and what was happening in the world in general, um, which really helped me kind of reacclimatize back into the world. Oh, really? I love that. That is very sweet. That is a yes. very sweet, wifely thing to do. Now, Ryan. Yeah? Uh, why don't we start here? <laughs> why don't we <laughs> just start Speaking of sweet, here? wifely things. Speaking of your sweet, dear <laughs> wife, who may have watched the show and not liked the way, you know, fans can sometimes get mean on Twitter. Yes. So I know there was a tweet that was put out where, I, you know, I'm just going to, I think people who know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to yep. say, rather than rehash it, the floor is yours, Ryan. What do you want to say about the tweet that your wife put out? Uh, obviously, I have nothing but respect for the feeders. I understand that you can feed and have a job um, and all of those things. Uh what happened in this scenario is my wife took all of the negativity from the previous months and lashed out all at once um, at probably and, and definitely actually the wrong audience. Um, uh, my wife is not a Twitterer. Uh, she doesn't uh, she's not familiar with the dark side of what can happen on that particular app. I really enjoy it. I will. Um, I will engage with, with people who love me. I will engage with people who hate me. Um, I will engage with anybody that wants to mention me. But um, she wasn't necessarily ready for any of that. And uh, she got to the end of her rope. She lashed out. I apologize on her behalf. Um, and, uh, and as soon as I saw the tweet, I deleted it immediately, um, and tried to make amends on Twitter. But if you're seeing this and you had only seen that tweet, understand, I talk to the feeders all the time because I understand that you guys are the passion behind the show and you're the reason why the show has got back, got brought back. And the fact that I got to play it all is because of people like the feeders. So, um, nothing but respect, nothing but love, uh, and, and, you know, uh, it's unfortunate that that happened, but I made sure to delete it as soon as I saw it. Well, here's the thing. Here, see, now I didn't see that. And look, here is here's just kind of my stance on this in general. A, I feel like um, 
I'm very forgiving of family members being protective of the people playing because I can't imagine how hard that is. So I kind of cut them slack on that right off the bat. If I'm going to be mad at anybody or I'm going to want to give anybody shit, it's going to be you, Ryan. <laughs> you and your 800 hours, but you never watch the live feeds, Ryan. I know. I know. I never I never brought myself to watching the feeds. Um, I always felt like the... Uh, the pe- the good people at Big Brother, wherever they're making Big Brother, was going to bring me the best of the week anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I always felt like I didn't need to get into the feeds because when something would blow up, I'd see it on Twitter and people would isolate the little piece of feed for me. Um, I am a media junkie. I'm a pop culture junkie. And so I do love Big Brother desperately. I do love Survivor desperately and i have i'm waiting to start that season despite everybody in my feed saying that it's been not a good one um but i'm still gonna watch it um but i like there there were 350 recordings on my pvr when i got home and only 29 of those are big brother um so i watch so much stuff i just i need somebody else to curate the feeds for me right um i just don't have time to do them myself Hey, Ryan, during every season of um, U.S. Big Brother, we have a whole section on our website that is the flashbacks, and we actually do exactly what you want. We curate the best moments from the feeds, and we put the flashback times right there for you on our website. Then I'm going to have to get on the website and check it out. We're pretty awesome here, Ryan. (laughs) Um, (laughs) No, I mean, I think that's where a lot of people's – like – I think feeders in general love people that love the game. I think yes. where people um, got frustrated was like, Ryan knows so much about this game, but oh, he didn't watch the feeds. And and that sucks in a way because I like, do you feel this is one of the questions now that you're getting a ton of from people. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that not watching the feeds really changed how you played the game or made you realize there was a whole nother aspect to the game that maybe you didn't realize once you were in there? Um, I think not watching the feeds uh, certainly didn't prepare me for the boredom that you face inside mm-hmm. the house. Um, and, and little things about, you know, Hey, that, that this, you know, uh, Oh, we're going to create a game with various um, cleaning materials and stuff. And then, cleaning materials would go away. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, little things like that uh, didn't really kind of pop into my mind because I'm much like I I treat, I treated big brother a lot. Like I treated most sports. Um, I'm a big flames fan. Can I tell you the roster up and down? No, because I cheer for the Jersey and the logo on the front of it, not necessarily for the fourth line guy that is maybe going to score a goal or two all year. And I know all of his stats. Um, Mm -hmm. I like the game of hockey and I'm a flames fan. So that's what I watch. I like the game of football. I'm a Cowboys fan, but can I tell you who the backup cornerback is? No, I can't because I cheer for the Jersey and the sport, not necessarily the guys playing it. Um, And I'm the same way with players too. Uh, I don't know a lot about the players, obviously, um, that have played the game. I know right. some about some of the greats, but I'm not that in depth um, when it comes to that thing. So I know the game itself really, really well and the strategies of the game itself really, really well, despite how I played it. Um, but I I don't necessarily know the players of the game. And I think there were a lot of people out there that, that took offense to myself calling myself a super fan um, mm-hmm. because of how I handle it. So, um, yeah, I, I still consider myself a super fan. I'm just not as in depth as most. Right. I think I have learned you never call yourself a super fan because (laughs) everybody's, uh, definition of super fan is very different. different. So I've learned you don't ever call yourself a super fan. Um, Cindy, uh, 1981 wants to know, do you regret putting up your closest allies (laughs) now, especially Andrew on the block week Uh, two? So, um, I got home and I was like, I'm going to binge watch the show. And I started watching the first two episodes and I'm like, in this next one, I win HOH and I nominate Andrew. I haven't been able to bring myself to watch it. 
I can't watch like that's how horrible a decision I know it is. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I feel like I was in a pretty bad spot at that time and should have thrown that HOH because the entire house was working on what everybody was calling the four week plan, which was to eliminate Marin, Veronica, Andrew and Hamza over the next four HOHs. Mm -hmm. And that effectively happened with the exception of Hamza's HOH. What everybody said was, if you go against this plan, you're going to get nominated next. Right. So I felt like I had to nominate Andrew and Hamza. I felt like if we could get them to pull themselves off the block, there was room to get somebody else out of the house. But if I didn't nominate Andrew and Hamza right at that moment, I would have been nominated at the first opportunity after that. So while I did get nominated a lot and my game didn't survive very long, I was in kind of a no-win situation with that HOH. If I hadn't nominated Andrew and Hamza, I don't know that I would have lasted as long as I did in the house. Um, so it was a terrible decision and something I regret because I nominated an ally or I nominated two allies. Right. Um, but I also felt like I was trying to escape um, and maybe be able to build something else with someone else at that moment. Uh, unfortunately, it just didn't work out. I see destinies in chat is saying what made what made Olivia be your backdoor plan? Like what was Ol the thought process behind that? Olivia is incredibly intelligent. Um, she's very, very smart. And I think uh, from everything I've seen throughout the, the chat world, people are saying that absolutely she's um, she's very smart. She's very funny. All of those things in that first week, she lied around a lot absorbing. Um, and I found that to be a fairly threatening behavior because people weren't really paying attention to live at all. And she was lying back in and absorbing information. So combining that with the level of intelligence she has, she did say that she was a marathon runner and that takes a, a physical attribute that a lot of people didn't have. You saw that in that buttoned up HOH where she was able to last until the end before making a deal with Kayla to drop. Um, Liv, I found to be a very threatening person in the house and somebody that wasn't connecting with me at all. So at that point, a backdoor target made so much sense for it to be Liv um, rather than anybody else. Now, in retrospect, I could have kept Liv around and, and never thought about it and should have targeted somebody else. But of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's always going to be different ways, like looking back, you're always going to wonder, which is why they always say you can't play the what if game at the right. end of Big Brother. I mean, technically Paris is the only single person who played the game correctly. Yes. Or yes, Paris play, played her way through <laughs> this game. Well, I mean, she won. So it's hard to when argue that anything Paris did was wrong when... Paris win, right. which you are happy for a Paris win, obviously, correct? Yeah, I think uh, I think anybody, I mean, again, back to the feeders, anybody watching it knew that there was obviously a connection between Paris and I um, that I felt was on a very real level. Um, and, and it seems none of the other house guests have disputed that. They've said, you know, well, Paris talked about you behind your back. Well, she talked about everybody behind their back and she won. So that's what's going to happen in this game. And I understand that. And I always felt like she knew that Maddie was better for her game than I was. Mm. So she was going to keep Maddie over me. That didn't mean she didn't care for me. She didn't like me. It just meant that she was doing what was best for her game. So I never really kind of got upset about that. I can separate that logically. But we had a we had a really good connection. And, and I think to me, she was one of the best people that I met in the house. So I couldn't have been happier to reward her with a vote. Um, I, you know, again, when people say, oh, she lied or she talked about people or she manipulated, I just kind of go back to the analogy of it, it's like saying, OK, play Monopoly with less money, like yes. play Monopoly and you <laughs> don't get to all, all hotels are free then, I guess, for right. the other people like the rules of the game are lie and manipulate people. Only one person's winning. Yes. And, and that's why I'm not any. I'm not bitter about anything that happened in the house that anybody said while they were in the house. None of that. It's, it's all a part of the game and the game is a brutal one. It is a brutal social experiment where people are pitted against one another and those relationships have to be managed. Those relationships 
Uh, people beat up on each other all the time in the house and then turn around and smile at one another. And that's what happens over and over and over again. And so as a result, um, you know, everybody thinks that we're all a pack of savages when really you walk out of the house and, and you're right back. You're, you're friends with everybody regardless. Now, we have to say, though, Ryan, <laughs> we do have to say, it seemed like maybe you were a little bit upset about one person in the house. Oh, really? I'm thinking of a quote that went something like, she's a ball of hate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what? somebody just, just now, okay. today, while I was waiting for this, okay, um, said, oh, who was a more effective ball of hate, Pat Verbeek or Kayla? Um, it is a... Um, it is an expression that was in sports for okay. somebody who is hyper competitive, who you hate to be on the other team and who you wish was on your team. Okay. Um, not a lot of people caught that reference and that's fine too, because I'm an older guy and the people that I wanted to catch that reference caught it. Um, Kayla is a hyper competitive savage in a good way. Um, and, and I, Unfortunately, the the little ball of hate remark uh, may not have come across to everybody, but it is what she is. She's very competitive. She's hyper strong. She's she's an amazing human being. Um, and so, yeah, I went after her because I knew she was coming after me. Um, right. So and that was before the game. That was after the game. That was everything. Every moment until up until the finale I felt like I needed to maintain that because um, Kayla is is incredibly strong. I have to say, Ryan, we, you know, there is an expression, a non-sport expression that says, know your audience. Yes. And True. Ryan, we here at Reality Recaps would appreciate it if you maybe used Housewives references. Yes. Like, well, see, here's the thing. I'm not a Housewives guy. Okay. Um, well, there I were a lot of Housewives fans in the house. Um, I am not one of those guys. Uh, I uh, Housewives to me is is so difficult to watch. Uh, New, New Jersey girl in the chat room j literally <laughs> said before, it's like we can literally see the sports references glazing over Eric's <laughs> eyes. Yeah, the, the sports references are, are my wheelhouse. Okay. Um, so yeah, little ball of hate. People called uh, Ray Ferraro a little ball of hate, Pat Verbeek, and a bunch of guys throughout the 80s and 90s. And that's kind of – that's where I got that from is – is uh, certainly wasn't my expression. Um, it was something that was coined to talk about people who played the game incredibly hard and you hated them unless they were on your team. So, bottom line, was there – and I kind of think I actually have read your answer to this, but maybe it's changed. Was there any scenario where you voted for Kayla in the end to win? Once Will stepped down in that veto, uh, the final five veto, um, and took himself out of the running, Kayla would have gotten my vote over Will. Um, I, I feel like Derek played a far more subtle game than Kayla did. Um, while still winning a bunch um, of competitions towards the end of the season, but I feel like he played a far more subtle social game. So I think that might have that may have been a toss up for me. I'm probably voting for Derek in that scenario, but Kayla gets my vote over Will. Absolutely, um, I think Will uh, Will napped his way to the final five, um, and uh, I love the guy as a person, um, but. Uh, I don't know that I would have been able to vote for him. And, and in conversations with him, he said, I know that my game was a $20,000 game. Uh, he never suggested that he would have won. Okay. Um, Miranda K says, what did you think coming out of the show about all of the graphics made about you on Twitter? And they're going to kill me. I think it's M underscore BB. Yes. Loved you and love to make Orion edit during <laughs> the season. So what was your reaction to seeing all those um, so when awesome. you got out? So awesome. So happy. Could not be happier. The idea that there is a, a gif of me or a gif internet. I'll let you GIF. argue. I, never I mean, the, the guy who created it says it's gif. Correct. But it's not a it's not a giraffic interface. It's a graphic. And anyway, I'm not going to argue with, with the guy. Who, yeah, I agree with you. It's a gift. Anyway, 
Um, the idea that one exists of me riding a dinosaur through the backyard, mm-hmm. f- fantastic, fantastic. I love what the internet can do. I love that they put a bunch of stuff together. Any edit that features me, I'm going to love it um, because I get a real kick out of that. And the idea that I can now have group chat conversations with my friends and have that be a response right. to a question right. is phenomenal. I, I love everything about it. Uh, Behoot wants to know, you seem to bump heads a lot with both Kayla and Maddie. Who do you think um, it was? Why do you think it was difficult for you to play the game with them socially? Um, Kayla, Kayla believed that she was my backdoor target in week two. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody told her that she was my backdoor target in week two. And as such, Kayla was coming after me pretty aggressively. Um, and it was a game standpoint and Kayla in the game didn't much separate the social aspect from the game itself. And so our relationship socially just was never there because she always believed I was targeting her. And I did target her for a long portion of the game because I felt like she was targeting me. And when that happens in the house, you have to have that person go. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as Maddie goes, I thought that we were working together for a very long time uh, until kind of the week that I was on the block against Marin, where she told me to actively, aggressively target Dela or I was going home. Um, in that moment, I still believed Maddie. And so what, what really kind of shocked me afterwards to know that I was played that badly Mm -hmm. and that everyone just let her off the hook for it, um, was also surprising to me. Um, but you know, there, there's nothing I could do about it at that point. And, and Maddie and I have been texting nonstop since I got home. Um, again, the game is the game and, and you can be aggressive and angry within it. Mm-hmm. But the minute it's over, if you don't let it go, um, that really is, is on you. Uh, I, I was playing the game I lost and, uh, and I'd love to play it again if they'd ever let me. And if I was ever, if I walked in the door and I saw Kayla as another returning house guest, her and I would team up on day one. And I think we'd be unstoppable. I actually do too. If you expe- well, I guess if you teamed up, well, I mean, meaning publicly, yes, teamed up meaning yes. public. I think you should team up and keep it a secret. Well, yeah, I mean that was my uh, that was my idea going into the house on day one was mm-hmm. trying to find. Um, I believe it was Danielle and Jason uh, back in season three of Big Brother US that had the secret alliance. They were on the opposite sides of the house. They kept each other safe until the very end. And then they got to the final three together. Um, You know, that was my idea of what I wanted to do in the house. It Mm -hmm. doesn't really work anymore um, or it hasn't really been tried in in that kind of way in a very long time. So I wanted to try that and see if I could get it to work. Um, But yeah, I think I think I'd work with Kayla. I'd, I'd have no questions working with her. She's incredibly competitive and and she's you know, she is a very strong target. And I told her that in week two and in, in our chat in the HOH room, I said, I'd love to hide behind you guys as the showman's and be the third wheel all the way to the end. Right. Because one of you will cut the other one and I'll get 20 grand. I, you know, speaking of people that you worked with, I yes. saw this uh, question as well. Did, um, have you found out yet uh, how Paris was yes. kind of responsible for Sewered you getting... Sewered me for Matt instead of Maddie. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, I found that out. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, I know for Paris's game, right. having Maddie was better than having me. Oh, yeah. So, of course, she's going to save Maddie instead of me. For my game, I was going to keep Paris around. I would have kept Johnny and Erica around. Um, those three I thought were best for my game long term because they were people I felt like I could trust. Um, so Paris wanted to keep Maddie. So in order to keep Maddie, she had to throw me under the bus. And when you throw me under the bus to Kayla, who's been wanting to run me over with a bus for most of the game, Mm -hmm. that's a pretty easy thing to do. Um, So it was a good strategic move. I, you know, it was so hard in a sense watching you that first week. And again, like we said, you know, all those issues with the first week, because 
I mean, like, we loved it. As people that like watching the feeds, in a sense, I loved almost a little bit of paranoia that you gave to people. Like, why is no one in alliance? And why is nobody joining in any team? No one's doing anything. And I'm just letting you guys know, like, I'm over here. I used to love when you used to end, like, all your conversations and just be like, all right, guys, I'll see you later. I'm just letting you know, like, I'm going to be alone over there playing pool. So just if anybody wanted to come and talk to me about maybe an alliance, I'll just be playing pool. And I was like, somebody go make an alliance with Ryan already. <laughs> Somebody go do it. Like name it, I, make it official. I kept, I kept waiting for something to happen, but it never did. Um, I think a lot of people, because I generically had that same conversation with everybody, mm. everybody thought that I was trying to screw them personally. Um, and it, it really kind of backfired on me in that way. I really tried to, to put some things together over the course and, and work with people honestly and, and work with people um, you know, in a meaningful way. But I mean, I said to Will, I said, well, you had the same deal with me that you had with Johnny and we made that deal on day two. And he goes, oh yeah, but with Johnny, it was real. With you, it was always game. And I was like, okay, well that, that was on day two that he and I made that deal. So, um, I, I just never really kind of connected with anybody. I don't know if it was the age difference. I don't know if it was, um, because I, I felt like that at the end of week one, that's why I tried to do that at the beginning of week two to find something to work with. But, uh, I was, I was speaking to somebody else and they said that Derek and, and Jesse and Will were all talking pretty seriously about bringing me in as a fourth to their three. Um, but then they heard that somebody else said they were at a target and that it came out of Derek's mouth. Um, which isn't true. Cause I didn't tell the only person I would have said that to was Maddie. Um, because he was the only one she named. But anyway, people worked it pretty well around me. So speaking of, so speaking of things that were heard and said when you were playing yes. pool, obviously okay. a big moment uh, from this season was what you overheard Allie yes. say at the pool table about Paris Manny. I appreciate you saying what I overheard and not what I thought I overheard. That that makes or were you Well, sure. <laughs> I mean, we and I and I don't think this is a bad question to ask. Like, obviously, no, I'm, the I'm camera wasn't the camera wasn't on it at the time. I don't think anyone's going to care if we talk about this. So, right. w- because it was such a big point point of the show, but they never I, showed us what heard, was said. So I heard. I heard. I walked in the back. Like I said, I saw brown hair short person brown hair disappearing into the hallway and i heard ali say i don't trust that bitch and i will stand by that forever um there have been questions uh in the past that said um uh there have been you know there have been some other media interviews i did that maybe questioned that um but there's been a couple other things since then that have kind of reinforced that for me Um, that I did hear it because Mm -hmm. other people on kind of YouTube clips and stuff have said, well, yeah, she said that all the time. So of course she said it. Um, And so uh, there there are kind of people who are on my side, people who are on her side, but I never would have done that. As as bad a move as putting Andrew and Hamza on the block in week two was for me strategically, um, going after Allie at that moment would have been far worse if I didn't believe it to be true. I was working with Maddie in my mind. I was working with Paris in my mind. Um, And so I was warning them because I did see their relationships with Allie and Liv getting a little closer, especially Paris. And I wanted her to know that she shouldn't have trusted Allie because Allie was telling me all the times that she didn't trust Paris. Um, So I was trying to protect the two of them and try and kind of uh, come across that I was giving them information and I was trying to protect them in an effort to make our relationship deeper. Um, But it just never worked out that way. And Mm -hmm. and despite the fact that I stayed that week, I think that particular blow up uh, really cost me um, even more than, than anything else in the game. Maximus mom uh, in the chat room has a very important question. Okay. She would like to know, Ryan. Oh, it's Yanny. <laughs> uh, yeah. Who who was scarier yelling at you? Allie or Will? <laughs> neither. Um, neither of them are scary. 
I'm I'm six two two at that point at like two eighty. Allie was yelling because I called her out, and mm-hmm. and of course she was yelling. Of course she was angry. Will was yelling. I mean, Will yelled at everybody all the time. So not that's not fair. Will yelled a lot in the house. Um, so Will yelling at me wasn't scary either because you can't I, understand I just, them. Yeah, not well. No, I could understand him. He used some some heavy profanity, uh, and I, w- I'm familiar with it. Um, but I just don't, I don't get scared when somebody's yelling in my face more often than not. If you're in a conversation and you need to get to the point where you're angrily yelling at somebody, mm-hmm. it's because you're losing the argument. Um, so I was never really afraid of anybody in those situations. I think if Will had stayed in the living room, it would have gotten a little more heated from my end. Mm-hmm. Um, But with Ali, especially, I felt like if I stepped out and made any remark that was was outlandish or if I if I stayed anywhere but right in that spot of reason, I felt like I could have lost the argument right there. Um, So, I mean, Ali yells at a lot of people. That's what she does. She's fiery. She's you know, she's got a bit of a temper to her. And, and, you know, it, it never really scared me at all. Yeah, I think I think Max Fasan was probably just joking of yeah, who was yeah, of I, who was scarier. Of the two of them, I'm probably more physically afraid of Will. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think Will is just he's like, I don't you want. It's like, what are you saying? Like, I yeah, like, well, that, there's that too. It's harder to understand. You don't really know what he's saying. I am going to do a special show when Will is here, and I'm going to have a third little box down here. It's going to be a translator. Subtitles. Subtitles <laughs> translator, because I really don't know what he's saying half the time. Or yeah, really as a, like I, I work with a couple newfies in my office, so uh, I, I'm familiar with the accent. Mm-hmm. Um, but there were times where everybody, I'm sure, had just blank looks on their faces. They kind of struggled to to put together what Will said sometimes. I see this. I you get this question a lot. I'm actually going to take it from Cami forever. Although I don't know why people are so, no offense, Cami. I don't know why this is so shocking to people. But Cami wants to know, um, how do you feel about finding out that Paris is a law student? Um, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, she's she's incredibly intelligent. Yeah. Um, Paris is. Um, I I have nothing but nice things to say about Paris. Um, she's she's awesome. I. That she's a law student is is great because now she has a hundred thousand dollars to help pay for law school. Exactly. Um, you know, like I, 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 it doesn't surprise me um, to find out she's a law student because she is incredibly bright. She played dumb a lot in that house, and I could see her playing dumb a lot in that house mm-hmm. um, because you know then when people would leave, she'd tear them apart as soon as they left, um, and and I knew that that meant that she was smarter than she was letting on. So the fact that she's a, a law student or an aspiring law student is, is great. Um, I'm going to take a question over from Twitter. It's from Lawson Can Cruise, and she says, Ryan, as a super fan, is there anybody this, uh, whose game you modeled your game after? Um, I wanted to model it after that Jason Danielle example from uh, Big Brother Canada 3 or Big Brother US 3. Um, I mean, I, I wanted to do a lot of things. I thought I'd have the, the capacity to be a villain. I thought I'd be able to lie to everybody all the time and just get away with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also, once I got in the house, I realized that that's not who I am. Uh, in my day-to-day life, I'm, I'm an honest guy. I talk to people honestly. I deal with people in a business sense where your integrity and your honesty has to be the first and foremost to gain the trust of your clients. Um, and so despite me wanting to be that guy when I went in, I certainly wasn't able to. Uh, and, and so, um, so I, I tried to play the, the honesty and integrity game the rest of the way. The problem was, I think for me is every other person in the house lied so much to everybody else Mm -hmm. that you could never believe anything anybody said. So even when I was being honest with people, they assumed I was lying. Right. Um, uh, uh, Sal Wall wants to know, what was your first thought when Arissa told you that Canada saved, uh, when Canada was either going to save you or Will? Did you think it would be you? I leaned over into Will's ear and I said, congratulations. 
I assumed Will was going to be the guy that was saved um, because in the house, Will was the guy who was better liked. Mm -hmm. um, Will was the guy who was uh, that, that everybody wanted to be friends with. Um, and Canada typically, as we saw with the Veronica and Marin, uh, both of the, the angels, <laughs> angels. <laughs> being put in the house, um, I think, uh, I think Canada typically votes for the nice guy. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I felt like Canada was going to vote for Will. Um, I said, congratulations to him when that happened. And I thought maybe just maybe if the right person went up. I might be able to end up staying in the house after all, um, but it didn't turn out that way. Canada saved me, and and you saw how I felt about that. Right, I no, jumped we, off the ottoman like it was on fire. Right, no, I, that was a great. It was a great. Uh, it was definitely one of the great moments of this season. But yet, and I mean, we really watched. I saw somebody, a BB little two in the chat room, said, "How disappointed though were you, Ryan, in not finding a hidden veto? We saw you looking around a ton <laughs> for a hidden veto." Yeah, I mean, I, you, you have to look for it. If you don't look for it, you're being naive. And the fact that everybody left me alone all the time mm -hmm. meant that I could look for them. Um, so was I disappointed when I was lying on the floor trying to scare Will and I saw the vine going up the wall to where a hidden power of veto obviously was at some point and Hamza had it, I guess? Mm -hmm. um, was I disappointed that I didn't find that? Yes. Did I do most of my searching on the night one morning number two, like the, the morning of day two, I was up about two and a half hours before everybody else. Um, and I walked into the kitchen and I did the dishes and then I did a thorough search of the main floor, um, looking for some sort of power. Unfortunately, it was sitting in the bedroom, which was one of the two rooms I couldn't search for. Um, and, and didn't think to search later in the day uh, where I would have found that that veto and then having that in my pocket, I never would have won that other HOH. Now, uh, so um, uh, what was the deal with the flower and the vine? Is that what you that's like the whole oh, flower and the vine? Yes. And the, uh, the yeah. So uh, in the white room, uh, the vine, there's only one spot in the whole house where one of the vines left the floor right. and went up the wall. And that's where the hidden secret power of veto for the first four weeks was. Mm -hmm. um, it was hidden on the wall. So at one point, I was just lying on the floor waiting to spook Will when he came into the white room. And I was like, that's weird. And it was after Hamza left because he had put his bag on top of it um, after he found it so that nobody else would find the vine. Um, and... So he hid it. Uh, but yeah, it was a secret. The secret power was up behind one of the flowers in the white room. Okay, Ryan. Here's the thing. Is there another one that I didn't find? There is none, period. What? You made me nervous, Ryan. I literally, while you were answering, I really don't know what you were saying. Because here's me. Uh, am I totally losing my mind? And there was some secret video that I don't know that Ryan is talking about right now that was hidden Hamza, in the bedroom. Hamza told us straight up that he had a secret power of veto for well, four weeks. Well, he didn't. He lied? He, that is a lie, Ryan. I literally am like, I don't want to just tell Ryan he's flat out lying oh, right now. that's spectacular. Yeah, there was that no... is so great because Hamza had us all convinced because there is only one spot where the, the <laughs> vine goes off the floor up the wall behind a, a rose. So we all expected that that was something there, especially when you look at it. There was a staple hole in the wall right. that wasn't where any of the rose was. And so, yeah, he said he had a piece of paper and he walked in with a secret power of veto for four weeks. Oh, that's so totally cute. a lie. You, totally a lie. <laughs> You like the panic that you have caused behind the scenes right now. There's just I like am walls so of excited text. to like, talk to him. So. Everybody's like, you need to put him out of his misery. I'm like, I don't remember any secret veto. So movie. great. There was so great. none this year at so all. So great. Will is the only one that got the secret. He in got the house. Marcia in the tomb. Right. And Marsha right? flat out, yeah. And Marsha flat out said, Bet you thought it was gonna be a secret veto, but there isn't right. one this year. That's nuts. See, so yeah, maybe if I had watched the show, I would have known. <laughs> no, you would have needed to watch the feeds to know that one. <laughs> well, yeah, I could have. I, yeah, I could have done that, too. Um, but uh, I was hard to watch the feeds when I was in the house. Yeah, 
Exactly. I see. Yeah, Lost and Cruise says, looks like Eric found the opening for the edited show. He lied. Yup, Ams is a liar. That's amazing. I can't wait. Um, I cannot wait to talk to him again. Well, let's get him on the phone right now. No, we already have enough audio issue. Oh, uh, I, I very well might. Uh, <laughs> I've, got, I've got mine sitting right here, and I'm tempted to text him right now. <laughs> did, did, uh, Didi wants to know in the chat room, did Kayla's comments um, about jury affect your vote in any way? I have to say, and I gave Kayla such shit for this on her phone interview. I was like, Kayla. Neither here nor there. But when people have to decide whether they're going to give you $100,000, maybe don't scream in their face that they're giant babies. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it didn't affect my vote. Um, right. And, and I'm not sure it affected the outcome. Um, coming out of the jury house, there were, uh, I think, four votes that were very secure for Paris. Mm -hmm. um, if she made it, and she did, and, and she would have won 4-3 at absolute worst. However, okay. um, jury management is a thing. And when people yes. are undecided, it's not the best strategy. And, and I mean, she said that too. She's, she said that elsewhere, um, that her jury strategy was that she didn't have one, um, for jury management. So, uh, it was, it was an interesting way to go. That's for sure. And I don't know, maybe it's because she already thought she'd lost mm -hmm. and, and there was no, convincing us so she might as well go out with a bang um because calling the jury a bunch of babies is going to live a long time in reality tv show lore right. um so maybe she was looking for that i'm i can't entirely say why she would have told us that mm -hmm. um but uh, i think she may have cost herself a couple votes anyway uh, well, clearly she did. <laughs> clearly it did cost her some votes. Um, what was it like? You got this question from a lot of people. What was it like for you being in jury? Did you, I mean, obviously the game's over, but I know there are people who enjoy jury, enjoy that time. Was it an, in, was jury an enjoyable experience for you? I guess is the question. Uh, yeah. Until other people showed up, jury was oh. great. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. I <laughs> No, I read I read seven books in seven days before anyone got there. Um, mm -hmm. I I watched a bunch of movies and and when people got there, um, they were very interested in rehashing their seasons and why, especially because it was a triple. It wasn't like one right. person came in and you could have that conversation. It went from me to four people all of a sudden. Right. Um, and so uh, they were all very interested in rehashing the season and why decisions were made and and what was happening. And they were all decisions I wasn't a part of. So anytime that started to happen, I just got up and went and watched a movie somewhere else. Um, it was it was pretty easy to just kind of be alone and, and reflect on the game. And I got the information I felt like I needed from the other jurors to confirm my vote of Paris over Kayla. OK, but um, I never felt like I needed to rehash the whole season. So, okay, so be, so you in jury, you basically kind of had your mind made up then regarding what scenario would play out. You didn't really want to rehash everything then over and over. Yeah, I felt I felt like there was not really a need to. I, okay. I when I left the game, I knew who I was voting for in an order, and none of the game information that came to me changed any of that order for me. Um, there were a lot of people that that came out that that. You know, when they came out, they just confirmed what I already felt was going on in the house, which was Kayla and Derek were incredibly powerful and mm -hmm. leaving them in the game that long was a total mistake. Um, that Paris was very good at manipulating people and was doing an excellent job of being everybody's best friend. And you could tell that that was the case because she didn't touch the block for as long as she did. Um, and then every, you know, every other kind of combination of things um, I felt was was exactly the way it was when I was evicted. Nothing changed for me from a gameplay perspective because right. everybody continued to be who they were. 
Interesting. I And I agree. I always say, like, my whole argument that I made uh, towards the end of the game is, everyone on that jury knows who they're voting for. They've already thought about every scenario of which two people will end up and where their vote will go, depending on... I really didn't see anything anybody said coming into jury changing anybody's opinion. I, I don't think you really can change a lot of people's opinion uh, with your two-minute jury speech or your answers, I guess is my point. I certainly think it's possible um, if your games are very similar. I think if Kayla had been sitting next to Derek, sure, it would have right. been a very interesting question session because we that. would have needed the information to decide, okay, whose move was whose move and what did you do and why did you play it that way? But, but when I felt because you had Kayla and Paris who played very different games, mm -hmm. it was easier to judge which game we preferred over the other. Um, Destinies uh, in New Zealand wants to know, who was mo who were you most disappointed to see walk through those jury doors? Well, the day I left, I said uh, in my Arissa interview and in every interview the rest of the way that I was rooting for Johnny. Um, I wanted to see Johnny win the game. Uh, I would love to see Johnny play the game again from a fan standpoint. I think Johnny um, was an incredibly good player of Big Brother. Um, and so I was rooting for him to win. I knew that he would probably have to win out in some sort of combination of HOHs and vetoes to make that happen. I also thought that he had the potential to do so. So I was most disappointed to see Johnny walk through the door um, of anybody. Uh, and when I left, I said I wanted a Johnny in Paris finale. So after that, I wasn't disappointed to see anybody come in the house because that meant Paris was still there. Interesting. I love it. Well, I want to I want to let people know this super quickly. We forgot to do this at the beginning of the show with all the chaos because we only have about 10 minutes left on this okay. show. Make sure you guys become a fan here on you now so that you are alerted every time we go live. Tomorrow night we are live with Olivia. So we that will hear fun. what fun thing she has to say. Pretty much we have somebody every single night for the next nine nights except Saturday. So but all you need to know is next up is uh, Olivia for all of you guys. And of course, like I said, the number one fan on this show so far, it's Nicole, uh, is going to be winning Ryan's autograph. And of course, Ooh. we're going into the patron <laughs> show after. We're going to the patron show after this. But um, oh, I want to try and get through a few more of these questions for you. You had so many. And look, I am sure I do see Ryan on Twitter interacting with a lot of people. If you guys didn't get your questions, there's no way I can get to all these questions. If you guys didn't get your questions answered, tweet them at Ryan. I am sure Ryan yes. make sure you're following him, but we'll get we'll get to where you guys can follow Ryan and all that stuff at the end of the show. Let me jump over to Darcy St. Amant, who has a very important... Oh, and Darcy and I have talked a lot. Okay, well then... I'm pretty sure. He has pretty a, sure that's Darcy. He has a very serious question for you. Sure. And he would like to know, what was the deal with your playlist... All beard songs by beards. <laughs> um, look, it's not, you know, it's there's a reason for it. Um, I think the beards are a phenomenal band. Um, mm -hmm. they 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 cover a bunch of different styles. They cover a bunch of uh, stuff. I just I get a kick out of music that makes me smile um, more than anything else. I, I'm not a stank face dancer, mm -hmm. uh, as I'm sure you guys saw throughout the season. Um, I like music that makes me smile. Uh, bands like Steel Panther are hilarious. Uh, John Lajoie is a Canadian comedian. You guys might see him on The League. Um, he does the everyday normal guy raps and those those kind of things. I think he's hilarious. The Lonely Island um, guys, Andy Samberg and those guys. Uh -huh. I love comedy music. I love things that make me laugh. Um, and so if you can if you can make me laugh while also having good musical quality, then I'm going to listen to you a lot. Um, and so, yeah, I put all four albums of the Beards songs on my playlist because why not? It's really okay. funny. And it was exposing. Uh, I've exposed the band now to a, an audience they may not have had before. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that people may go and check them out. 
Interesting. Um, yeah, bro, you got this question a lot. Why did you vote to keep Erica over Will, who had previously voted to save you? Um, uh, and when it, and Erica had nominated you. So what? Why did you? I guess feel uh, that Will was better. I guess for your game. Of the two of them, Mm -hmm. um, I certainly felt like Erica was better for my game. Despite the fact that she nominated me, I still felt like she wasn't ever really targeting me. Mm -hmm. Um, I felt like I was nominated because the rest of the house wanted me nominated, and she was trying to take a little bit of the heat off herself. Um, So I I felt like Erica was going to be more loyal to me in a long-term way than Will was. Um, and obviously right. I think, I think that was right. Um, uh, because Will wasn't loyal to me at all. Will voted to keep me, but I think not because he wanted me in the game. He just wanted Marin out of the game. Um, and so I think at, at that point, um, Will voting to keep me was, uh, an interesting decision that I appreciated at the time. Um, but it was very clear. And, and in the small amount of things I've seen on the feeds about will talking mm-hmm. about me, that people have kind of tagged me on. It was clear that I think I made the right choice. Um, I think Erica might've had my back more firmly than will would have. And I would have worked better with Erica in a long-term way than I did with will. I felt like Erica was being more honest with me than will was. I think uh, I agree with that, and I meant getting rid of Will. Be, be, I didn't mean yeah, Will is yeah, better yeah. for your game. I yeah, meant getting rid I, of I, Will I, is better yeah. for your game. But um, yeah. yeah, and I think Will is, uh, as we saw, only loyal to Will all season. Yeah, I don't think exactly. Will, I, Will that is that was exactly. True. You know what? Actually, I won't say that. Will is loyal to Will and Parker. Um, oh right, and, yeah, sure. and having and and whatever Will needed to do to get further in the game so that he could win or take home some money for Parker, Will was going to do that. Um, And so I won't kind of disparage what Will did in the house either because it worked for him to a point. And, and I think that, um, you know, I've, I've got Carter at home. I know for me that that's what the game was about uh, was playing to make my son's life better. And that's what Will was doing. So Will was only loyal to Will, but that's because Will was also being loyal to Parker. Um, a lot of people want to know, and maybe uh, just very black and white with these answers. Sure. Uh, uh, who do you think you would have voted for in these situations? Like, regardless okay. of jury speeches or whatever, if you just okay. had to go with your gut, if it was Paris versus Derek in the final Paris. two, you would have voted for Paris. Yes. And if it was Derek versus Kayla in the final two... My instinct says Derek. Okay. But um, I would have been far more open to being convinced to vote for Kayla. And is there any is there any way that you could have seen yourself giving a win to Will? I almost can't even say that without laughing. Uh, you know what? If Will if Will had not gone out when he did, and he had done what Paris did by winning the final four HOH and winning the final three HOH, right? Then the path was open because I think winning those two competitions, they're obviously the most vital competitions of the year. Um, those final three competitions. So the final four V the final four HOH, the veto and the final three HOH are the most important comps of the year. And if you can win two out of those three, then that is a very strong resume builder. So if will had been able to do what Paris did, then maybe, but it would have been very difficult to convince me that uh, that will deserve the money. Interesting. I want to take the last question um, for now from um, our town, who I love this question, and he asks, is there anything that you learned about yourself playing Big Brother that maybe you didn't know about yourself going into the game? Um, I thought that I am a bigger a-hole than I turned out to be. Um, I thought I would be able to walk in there and be the villain that I root for so often. Um, but everybody can say Ryan and Kayla went at one in, one another all the time. Mm-hmm. I still gave Kayla clothes for the catacombs so that she could be warm at night. I still tried to go out of my way 
to help everybody in the house when they were faced with a difficult situation. If somebody was having a tough time, I would try and comfort them instead of making it worse. And that surprised me because I didn't think that I was going to be that guy when I went into the house. And it turns out that I can't turn dad off um, as much as I wanted to. I have to say, I kind of feel that you feel you got the villain edit, and I really don't feel that you got the villain edit. Oh, no, I don't think I got a villain edit. Okay. I, I, Canada doesn't save the villain, so I know I didn't get a villain edit. And when I watch it back, but I thought going into the house that I could be the villain okay, and that I wanted to be the villain because I love the villain. Um, but I couldn't actually do it when I stepped inside the house. Right. So it was surprising to me that I wasn't able to kind of turn off who I am outside and mm -hmm. just leave that behind. Well, I think uh, you have so many fans, Ryan. So here's kind of where That's I, awesome. here's where I <laughs> kind of want to start. I want to give you full screen to say whatever okay. it is that you want to say to your friends here. You have hundreds of people watching you live. What do That's you want to say to your fans right now here watching you live? Uh, I guess first and foremost, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the idea that people voted uh, to – first, thank you for just bringing the show back at all. That I got a chance to play it was a lifelong dream come true. And the fact that I was saved and pulled off the block, whether you did it for me, whether you did it to spite Kayla, whether you did it to shake things up, however or why ever you voted for me – Thank you so much. It means the absolute world to me. There's almost never going to be a request that I say no to uh, when it comes to my fans because um, the fact that I have them at all is amazing. Uh, and, and definitely hit me up on Twitter um, because I'm happy to talk to everybody. Follow me on Instagram, all that stuff. It's Podcaster Ryan on Instagram and Twitter's at BBCanRyan um, because I do want to interact with you and I will interact with you forever and ever. And if I miss something the first time, get at me again, because uh, I want to make sure that, that you guys get the time that I wish I got if I was doing the same thing. So um, I'm never going to turn away from, from anybody. And uh, to the feeders especially, thank you for paying attention. Thank you for watching, um, because uh, it's you guys that collect the best stuff that doesn't make the show. Um, and, and sometimes... Uh, the internet is great for finding the best stuff. And uh, whether that's positive on me or negative, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm still going to enjoy it. And we suggest watching all of those great clips on Global's website. <laughs> <laughs> where they are all located. The only best yes. clips available. Um, right, well, Ryan, I'm glad you told people your social media. I will, of course, put them below this video yes, on awesome. our website. But again, quickly, so Twitter, right above you, um, BBCan6, yes. Ryan, or just BBCan Ryan? Uh, no, just BBCan Ryan. Um, okay. BBCan Ryan for, for Twitter. Um, and then, uh, for Instagram, I'm at, uh, at Twitter, I'm podcaster Ryan. Um, and, and generically you can find me wherever you see podcaster Ryan on the internet. That's probably me. It's a relatively unique internet identifier. Um, but, uh, yeah, podcaster Ryan is where I can be found for other stuff. What do you use the most? Like as far as Twitter, okay, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. I've 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 been obsessed with Twitter for a long, long time. Uh, I am unlikely to friend people I don't know on Facebook, um, but uh, Twitter is is absolutely open, and and I, I'm talking to anybody and everybody if it pops up in my mentions. Um, I will get right on it. I think Twitter is definitely the. I think Twitter is the best way, the best one uh, to do. So congratulations, uh, Nicole, for being the number one fan. Nicole, we'll follow up with you later on that. Ryan, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to uh, us and your fans today. Patrons, we're going to be going over to the patron group. We'll see you there in one minute. Uh, and thanks so much for watching, everybody. A pleasure to be here. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.